Ladies and gentlemen and everybody in between, I am some guy. And thank you very much for watching Overanalyze Adventures. Today I'm going to continue the overanalysis of what is undoubtedly my worst game of 2015. And that's Dark Years. Well, it might be worthwhile to do a quick refresher. Basically, we're a detective. We're investigating a murder of a journalist. We've made our way to this laundromat that's owned by the father of the victim. Yeah, he's the guy who's currently spinning around in the background. He has given us some box, which we have unlocked, and it contains a bunch of precious documents that are apparently worth dying over, or something like that. It's not really clear, because the plot to this game doesn't really make any sense. But that's my best take on it. So yeah, let's just do this. Now these documents we're reading right here are all about the lead up to the 1953 Iranian coup d'etat that saw the democratically elected government overthrown and the Shah instated and democracy more or less was killed in Iran for 26 years, at least until the Iranian revolution and well, that's a whole another can of worms. But to say the least, these documents are kind of peculiar. One, they're poorly translated, so it's very difficult to read them. And two, most of these pieces of paper seem to be newspaper articles that someone's clipped out. So I don't understand how this is secretive or precious information. There's no secret spy coup stuff in here, really. It just seems like all topical Iranian articles. I feel like there's a great opportunity missed here for the developer to actually jazz it up a little bit, invent some fake documents, make it seem like, oh my goodness, we're uncovering information about a coup, instead of just reading through a bunch of newspaper clippings. But what makes matters even worse is that the info dump is just kind of repetitive. I can sum up the information conveyed in it in a few sentences. Britain and America are mad at Iran because Iran has nationalized its petroleum reserves. Britain in particular is pretty cheesed about it, and America doesn't like it either. So there's some political stuff going on that doesn't look good for Iran, especially if you know your history doesn't really play out well for them. But hey, we can leave now, and I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing at this point. <laughs> ah, so the mooks got all sneaky on us, and instead of kung fu fighting, they just hit us from the back. Oh no, they appear to have stolen our newspaper clippings. What will we do? How will we stay informed on the latest goings on between America, Britain, and Iran? Oh my goodness, I don't see a newspaper box anywhere around here. Truly, we are in dire straits. Oh hey, we're suddenly the newspaper man again. I guess we have to carry out his mission, which is find some forger and leave Britain. Because yeah, we escaped prison and we're kind of a wanted man now, so... Fleeing the country doesn't seem like the worst idea. Yes, our frame rate has finally improved again. Why? I don't know. The game's loading the same map, but here we're getting a nice solid 20 to 30 frames, whereas before, we were getting 2 to 5. Alright, well that driver's drunk. And the interior of this bus exists in another dimension. So anyway, I finally made my way to the forager. See, Miss Army, I can only make an English passport for you, so you need to look like an Englishman. Wait a minute. How does this guy know already what we need? <sighs> he must be psychic. Yeah, I understand. Well... Damn, this game's artistic direction has gone all art house all of a sudden. You can disguise yourself as a British cunt because there are similarities between your face and his. <laughs> okay. Whoa, newspaper man, settle down there. Don't rip off that guy's face. I'll do my best to change my face and look different from Amir. I have fake beard and glue upstairs on the table. You can use them. You just need to change your clothes to look like the photo. Okay. Thank you for your help. Well, I start with the passport till you bring me the required documents. Oh, you just gotta love the way this game conveys information. I think we have to get a disguise and then find some documents. Huh, and this is a fake beard. Well, one of these is necessary. 
All right, so we got a fake beard now and some glue. Now all we need to do is get some documents. And what he means by documents is we have to take a photo for the passport. Yeah, the game's not very good at explaining itself. I swear everyone must be drunk out of their minds today. So many accidents. So many people trying to drive into buildings. This is just lunacy. Maybe. <sighs> Maybe it's not the day of the Triffids and everyone's gone blind. Oh no, the plants are going to get us. Oh well, let's get our photo made before Britain gets consumed by walking plants. Oh wow, looky here, we're inside the location we need to be inside of. But we didn't do it right, because you see, the game has to load this room that's already loaded in the overworld because of really bad game design from like a technical standpoint. Why would you render the location in the overworld in the same detail as the one you're going to load in when we walk in here? It's just, just saying that makes me think, what the hell are these people doing? I'd go see if I can find anything. Well, that's just all vague as hell. Again, we just need to get our photo taken, but the game seems to refuse to acknowledge that your task is that simple. So instead, you're going to have to stumble around groping up on everything until eventually you get to where you need to be. Hi, my friend. I want to have my photo taken for a passport. You know what kind of photo they need? What should I do? Yes, go sit in the chair. Look straight ahead. Your photo should be full face. Okay, sure. Wow, apparently we have our disguise on. We must have done it while we were opening the door. Damn, this dude is quick. Alright, he's all done. Yeah, that was a really weird cutscene, wasn't it? No sound effects, like, no sound of him taking a picture. It's amazing. Well, your photo will be ready by tomorrow. Oh, tomorrow is too late. I need it today. No way. I'm so busy now. I've no time to process your photo. Oh, I'm a journalist. I can process the photo if you let me. Okay. Everything you need is in the darkroom. Thanks. Huh, well... That was incredibly easy. So yeah, that's all we do. We develop a photo and boom, we just go back to the forger's house. But first, we must navigate through the streets of London. Where countless drivers have been blinded by a meteor that came last night while we were sleeping. Oh no. How will society rebuild itself? I mean, really, folks. Really. I just... The AI is so bad. I mean, it's self-evident, isn't it? I just... It's laughable. Again, this game was published by a developer. And they're charging like 15 bucks for this. You gotta wonder sometimes, don't you? I should find a passport soon. So the forgers mysteriously disappeared, but that doesn't matter, because we find the passport anyway, and then we just, well, leave the house, not wondering for a second what happened to our buddy. Oh, the developer seems to have decided not to have any voice acting here, so allow me, folks. Hi, what's the look you have put together? They are with us. Please let them in. Ah, oh, look at that wonderful 1953 London skyline with a jumbo jet just soaring through the sky and the London Eye right there. Yeah, folks, this is totally what 1953 looked like. This is really just a Google image they put some filter effects over, guys. It's amazing.
Oh, the game's getting all artsy-fartsy with its angles now, or my camera's just really broken. Yes, we're in a hospital, and yes, we're wearing the same suit, because that's how hospitals rolled in the 1950s. You feel better? Have you got pain? I'm fine. Can you give me a glass of water? Sure. Get some rest till I come back. So a delightful wife clips through her chair and then we can just roam around and leave. I know, it feels like they had such a tense and intimate moment there. Why did you get up? Didn't I tell you to rest? Rest? Why didn't you tell me Zabipur is missing? Oh, wow, Zabipur is apparently missing. You remember Zabipur, right? He's a guy who sounded like he was text to speak. I have to go. What? Go again? Go and leave me in pain and despair? Wow, what a delightful character she is. And I swear the voice actors changed from earlier. You forgot when you left me three months ago. I found you in a coma and prayed to God to get you back again. Whoa, really? So now we're getting some backstory on this guy. Apparently he was in a coma. All right, good to know. You took my child from me, and now you want to leave me all alone too? Yeah, she got shot in some drive-by and she's blaming it on her husband because I guess he was a target. What an ill fortune I have. Having to live alone, anxiously, forever. You're right, but do I have a choice? My best partner's life may be at risk. Wow, what a delightful exchange there. Our wife's all like, please do not leave me. I've lost my child. You've been in and out of the hospital. I worry so much. I'm so alone in this world. I'm breaking down. Please, for the love of God, just stay with me. And we're like, no, screw you. My best partner's life's at stake here. So yeah, we got a sudden new motivation. Screw the coup. We gotta save Zabapur. And maybe do something about the coup along the way. I don't know. Afshar, you traitor. You won't make it out alive this time. Kill him. Oh, hey. An action sequence. It's like a light gun game. Except really easy and terrible. Oh wow, looky there, we won. So now we gotta go to the red dot on the map. Where that is, why we have to go there, it doesn't need explanation. We gotta save Zabibor, damn it! Oh Afshar, I'm glad you're feeling better and released from hospital. But wait a minute, you were supposed to be discharged in two weeks. What are you doing here? I know you're right, that's not even close to what your text bubble said. Allow me to read it to you guys. Oh Afshar, it's really good to see you up and around, but wait a sec. Weren't you supposed to be dismissed in two weeks? What are you doing here? Well, I guess a voice actor got the gist of it. Thank you for your concern. I felt bad enough so I left on my own will. Again, so close for this section. Well, thank you for your concern. I felt like I had recovered, so I signed myself out. What's wrong, Afshar? What do you speak like that? I think the voice actor meant to say, Is everything alright, Afshar? What's that tone you are taking? Instead of, well... What do you speak like that? Yeah, whatever that was. Wrong? You know better. My best friend and partner has disappeared for a month and I didn't know it. We're just about done with the game. And now we find out that Zabipur is our hero's best friend. You'd think they would have bothered to establish that, you know, really early on in the game. But hey, whatever. The voice actor meant to say this. I guess you should know better. My assistant and close friend has now been missing for a month. But no one has bothered to let me know. Although that seems even worse because, guy, how did you not notice your assistant and close friend was gone for a month? It seems like, you know, you're kind of neglecting that relationship too. But then again, considering how well you treat your wife, you might just be bad with, you know, relationships in general. You are not aware of many events, after. Well, yeah, that's true. Everyone's not aware of many events. Events. But what the voice actor meant to say was, Afsha, there's a lot you don't know. You're right to be upset. You know that I like Zabibu too, but it couldn't involve you in the case because of your conditions. You were unintentionally engaged and surely suffered. It really seems like the voice actor just started ad-libbing halfway through that read. It's amazing. Because what he meant to say was, you have every right to be upset, you know. I like Zabibur too, but I couldn't get you involved. You got into this against your will and you will pay for it. So yeah, that's kind of confusing and sounds like it's a threat, so. 
But Colonel, I told you about the documents and their content in the hospital, and warned about the increasing corruption in the country. But you, you... It appears that the voice actor was able to actually say what the text box says. How wonderful. But still, what he said, that's kind of weird. So, we told Mustache Guy about the contents of those documents that were stolen from us, which were really just a bunch of newspaper clippings while we were in the hospital, but we didn't see any of that, so we'll just have to take the detective's word for it. What about me, Afshar? I trusted you and gave the cases of people in your absence, and this is the result. Now, Amiri is walking on it. I don't know when this ridiculous this story is going to finish. Yeah, what about you, Mr. Chief of Police? I really can't understand this plot. Like, I get what it's trying to do, but at the same time, it seems like it has an incredibly difficult time conveying any relevant information. Like, oh, there's a coup going on, but we really haven't uncovered anything about a coup other than everyone saying there is one. Like, we were looking into a murder of a journalist because, well, he was murdered. That seems to have been dropped. Zabipur is missing because he seems to have been investigating corruption, but... All this is happening off screen and nothing we're doing is really leading to any of this information. Like again, all that we found in that secret little locker was newspaper clippings about geopolitics. It's just remarkable how bad this storytelling is. But Colonel, why do these things happen? Who's behind all these stories? What's your guess? It's not easy to say. During the past two years after oil was nationalized, many people were troubled. When informants observed the provocations by Rashid and brothers, British intelligence, and the retired officers center during this period. But it can't be proved. You can find some information in the archives though. They may help you. Like the incident of last year's February 28th. Now having terrible voice acting is one thing, but having your voice actors read the wrong lines constantly and screw up dates is remarkable. I just can't believe how botched this reading was. What he meant to say was, you can't say that for sure. After the oil was nationalized, many were affected. Our spies kept an eye on the Rashan brothers, the U.S. intelligence, and the Association of Retired Officers. But we can't prove a thing. You can find some documents in the library, like what happened last year on February 9th. Maybe they will come in handy for you. What are you talking about? Uh-huh. You were suddenly conscious at that time. They were not good days. His Majesty decided to go on a trip, but it was rumored that the Prime Minister planned to remove the Shah from his position and declare a republic. So a bunch of stimulated hooligans set off for Sadawa Palace, and Musadah handed the passport and visa to His Majesty. The gang arrived and tried to kill the Prime Minister. He ran away to his house, but the mob also followed him. They had to go in there in disguise and save him through the neighbors' houses and bring him to a shelter. All right, the voice actor got the gist of that read right. So what happened was, there was a coup while we were semi-conscious, and some hooligans tried to, guess, take out the Prime Minister while the Shah was away on business. All right? Was this the coup we are investigating, or is this another coup that's just happening because Iran's just coup crazy right now? I'm sorry to hear that. Very well, Afshar. Go to Amiring at the information of the people's case. Oh, Afshar, you forgot something. Uh, so, I guess we got a medal, and now what looks like a flare gun. Alright, yeah, yes, yeah, so we're moving up in the world. Alright, we still have to find Zabibor now, so let's go about doing that by wandering around the police station and finding where we need to interact with things. Mr. Amiri, good day. Hi, Mr. Afshar. Thanks. Uh, anything I can do for you? Yes, I wanted some information on Zabibor's case. Well, it's an unusual case, and I haven't enough information about it. I just know that he left home on March 23rd, but hasn't been seen since. Shopkeepers haven't seen him either, due to their New Year holidays. In all, nobody has the slightest clue about him. I didn't find anything special in his house and office either. Okay, dear Amiri. Thanks. You're welcome. Take care. All right, well, that was pretty productive. zabapor has been missing for a while. No one's seen him. We should probably check out his office now. <laughs> What? Interesting. Zabipur's notebook. Let me read it. Alright folks, this is the last info dump we get before the game's epic conclusion. This is going to tie up all the loose ends, and yes, the font selection here is terrible. And it's incredibly hard to read any of this, but I'm going to try my best to do it for you guys. Alright, Friday, March 19th, 1953. Today, I talked to the 
person. He got visibly agitated when he found out that I knew he had been going to the Society of Retired Officers. He said that the colonel should not find out about this. Colonel something became worried. The dude claimed that there is a spy who gave them information. He was very worried about himself. He said that if they found out that he was the traitor, they would kill him as soon as possible. Uh, Okay, well that made not one lick of sense. Let's try to read the next page now. Wednesday, February 3rd, 1953. Huh, okay, we're going back in time now. Today, Detective Afshaw was assassinated. Oh wait, that's us, so we're dead. Okay. It seems that a car deliberately hit him. They say he's not okay and is in a coma now. Well, that's not what assassinated means. I do not know what to do without him. Oh... Oh, well, maybe there's more to this relationship than meets the eye. From the day I started working in the police, Detective Asha was like a father to me. But now, oh, God, please help him. Oh, (laughs) yeah, I think there's a nice little romantic subtext going on here. How fun. I mean, it does explain why our hero's way more attached to Zabapur than to his own wife. Next page, please. Thursday, February 4th, 1953. Yeah, we keep going back in time. Today, Colonel Afshar, what's that word, summoned me to his room, oh ho ho, and asked me to investigate his pants. I mean, Mashad's murder case in behalf of the chief until he comes back. I don't like to be in place of chief, but Colonel wants me to identify the criminals for the sake of detective. Okay, let's see what... Life desires for, I think, me. Yeah. Okay, folks. <laughs> All right. This is wonderful. All right. Saturday, February 20th, 1953. Finally, we move ahead in time. There are many new findings about the murder case of Mohammed Mossad. After talking to Mossad's father, I've realized that the victim had deposited some of his personal belongings with his father, and Afshar has taken them in order to obtain some new information, and this had led to his assassination. But, when come out of assassinators got out of the car to pick up the documents, he accidentally had left a receipt of a Swiss watch in the place. When I pursued the matter further, I understood that the receipt belonged to Mr. Kabadatich. Hey, there's a guy that they mentioned in the first page. Okay, so the game's just describing events that have already happened. Oh, wait, there's more to the entry. I still don't know who Kabata... I don't... It looks like all to me. But I will find out about it as soon as possible. These days, I feel if Detective Afshaw was here, something I can't really make out the rest of that. Something of me he be. All right. Yeah. I guess that's the receipt on the right there and the silhouette of the guy who tried to kill the detective. Okay, folks, it's the final entry. Wednesday, March 3rd, 1950. Did three. Oh my god, Kabada, whatever, the owner of that receipt and one of the new hired officers of the something. I understand coincidentally little by little. I was getting disappointed to find a way into this case. I searched all the archives, press, and list of advisors, but found nothing. Today, alteration when I went to visit the colonel and gave him a report, someone knocked at the door and came in, and the colonel introduced him to me. Oh, that makes perfect sense, folks. Wow, I feel so enlightened after reading through all these diary entries. And yeah, that does it, folks. That does it for this part of the over-analysis of Dark Years. Let's close on this note, and I'll see you next time for the finale of the over-analysis of this really bad game. I guess we would make advantage of Zabi Kuz's inexperience and take him to a quiet place. Oh, God, please help me. Wow, he got all that information out of what I just read aloud. Yeah, so Zabi is going to be killed. <laughs> Have a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody in between.